My personal motivation was I was on a train going from Amsterdam to Paris with very little money and a girlfriend and I didn't know what to do next. I needed an art style. I thought about it for a few hours and realized that I was going to do some abstract expressionism for the first time. It was everywhere. It was a convincing worldwide art movement. And that's when my art story really begins. And then after uh, about a year, it seemed not tough enough. So then I thought, hey, we gotta put something in there. I thought about stuff from the United States and the first thing I thought of was the icebox. It, it wasn't to really make a comment, although it ended up probably being a comment. It was just to help me have a picture. So I was trying to think of stuff to go into my paintings. I could think of Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Superman, and then the electric chair. I put the whole thing together into the icebox because the icebox seemed to be a container of some kind. I just used my imagination. It never occurred to me to stick to the truth or the false. It could be stuff in here that's absolutely true for me. And it could be stuff in here which is absolutely false. And I treated it both the same. I put it in there with a sense of psychology, which I hoped would be appreciated. But it wasn't at all. When I had my first show, it was not understood. And psychology was not permitted in art. Before 63, 64, it was a no on psychology. And then it became a huge yes. It was fabulous. For one thing, I was under the influence of a friend of mine who spent his whole day reading six or seven newspapers in various languages and was a very strong communist. And he was always pointing out the bad things that the United States did. And so it actually did have some influence on me. I guess I became a leftist. I was really full of negativism. I mean, it didn't work with me. It didn't teach me to respect authority at all. I have a trouble with authority. I can do any kind of crime, war, anything else. It just makes me laugh. So I have an improper attitude towards imagination. <laughs> I'm just doing it. But for some reason, I don't feel bad at all. World War II occurred to me as another thing to have the wrong attitude towards. You know, it's a joke too. Of course, it's not a joke. But I mean, I could treat it like a joke. Mickey Mouse versus the Japs, it's a big painting. In these early paintings, it seems to me obvious that they have a content in them. But it, it wasn't treated that way by the art world. When I started to show them, they were still spoken of as a technical thing. And it was very difficult to uh, get the, the subject matter out in front of the art supplies. Other people weren't painting Vietnam. They were staging demonstrations against Vietnam. Stuff was happening, but people who paint on a canvas, a picture, <laughs> were not painting Vietnam. It wasn't allowed, it was a very bad thing to do. So I was glad to do it. I felt wonderful about it. It was like a gift to me from the art world that they, they restrained themselves from doing this because I wanted to be different. If I say it was a complete muddle and I didn't bother to think about it very deeply, I'd be telling you the truth. I simply was glad to find a style for me alone and do it. I didn't worry about what people would think. Blacks in protest. That occurred to me right after the Vietnam thing because this started to happen at the same time. Vulgar overdoing of race stuff is for me. And so I did it. By this time, I realized it was okay for me to paint heavy duty politics. I just treated it like a maniac would treat it. And I just laid it in there as best I could and enjoyed the result as a fantasy thing. Lack of maturity is one of the parts of my art style that's very important. Uh, <laughs> so today, how do I feel about it? It's my art style. Excuse me, but I get to do that.